Hi everybody, welcome to EcoDriver. My name is Helmut. Today we go out on the EcoDriver loop with the long-awaited car, which is finally now uh, here in the market in Austria, with the MG5. That's the uh, first uh, electric station wagon on the market. And uh, we have the model with a bigger battery, 61 kilowatt hours, uh, 130 kilowatt motor. The WLTP consumption is 17.9, including charging losses. And if you take these out, then we'll be around 15. Of course, we stay, but we try to stay below that. And lane weight is 1,562 kilograms or 3,436 pounds. Uh, this car, yeah, there, there are no shifting paddles or for setting the regeneration. Um, we have uh, a couple of modes. I've chosen the eco mode. And the regen can be set on, in three different uh, stages. It's called curse here. Uh, it's one, two, three. One is the lowest and of course I chose this as I prefer no region at all. In order to coast with this car we have to or I have to uh, step on the the accelerator pedal a little bit to avoid the constant braking once you lift your foot of the accelerator. Um, but yeah we'll see how it works. We have a, a very nice uh, gauge on the right which shows us the power and uh, just keep it on zero or around zero then we are close to coasting. The route we're doing, i uh, show you here. We're starting in the southeastern edge of Innsbruck, go out of town for about a kilometer in a 30 kilometer per hour zone. We then hit the ascent, which elevates us around 360 meters, 1100 feet, followed by some rolling hills at descent, which brings us back to starting altitude and already gives us a good idea of where we end up with the consumption at the end, um, followed by some mixed roads between villages and towns. Uh, then we go into the motorway and at the end we have 18 kilometers, 11 miles of city traffic. After each one of these sections we check the overall and sectoral consumption and at the end we analyze the whole trip. The cameras will be on all the time in order to show a how I'm I driving in order to achieve the consumption that we will have achieved at the end. And um, second reason to prove that there is no need to go extra slow in order to be efficient. Um, it helps that we have a 100 km speed limit on the motorway, uh, so we are not in Germany where we have uh, basically no speed limit, but uh, uh, yeah, it helps us with uh, saving energy. But I think nowadays most people are reasonable enough to to restrict the speed in an electric vehicle in order to save uh, save some energy and to increase the range. So I hope you enjoy this. I'll talk to you after every section. Weather is tremendously nice today, and oh, to speak with the words of of the great Phil Liggett, it's a tremendously nice day today again. For those who know him, uh, and yeah, I hope you enjoy this, and I'll talk to you later. At the end of the climb, we see on the board computer it says 30.0 kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers, but it's like that for quite some time. So I assume it just doesn't go above 30 in what it shows us. I guess in 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 the background it's calculating it correctly, but it doesn't show. 
Hmm, that's interesting. Uh, we are now coming on to the hills, and on hilly roads, it's recommended to what I, how I call it, play with the road, uh, make use of the change of gradient. Uh, if it goes down, build up some momentum, of course, within the legal limits and uh, use this momentum or this stored kinetic energy to go into the next flat section, the next hill, and try to avoid accelerating harshly or at all on the way up. Maybe even if it's a short hill, reduce the speed slightly on the way up. S and uh, this also helps you reduce the amount of energy used. We are coming now to the end of the hill and the board computer says 23.8 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Yes, as I expected, uh, the, the board computer shows 30 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers max, but uh, calculates it correctly in the background. We had the 30 for quite some time and then it started going down. You've seen on the hills on the way up, I most of the time reduced the speed slightly and only re-accelerated when it got flat again. On the way down, it's important also to use gravity to accelerate, to bring the vehicle down, to try to avoid stepping on the accelerator and also try to avoid harsh braking, as in this case, 130 kilowatts from the motor. It's uh, yeah, highly likely that you exceed the regenerative capacity of the electric motor rather quickly, so then you brake with the friction brakes and this doesn't uh, recuperate any energy back to the batteries. At the end of the descent, we see 12.3 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. This seems to be a rather realistic uh, figure. This is roughly what I expected. And uh, this board computer seems to work correctly. Um, when we had the MG ZS uh, about a year ago, uh, there was the problem that the board computer only worked properly or what I think was properly after about, about an hour's drive. Uh, it took some time to correctly show the or, or to show the correct uh, numbers. We're now coming on to the open road section, mixed roads. Uh, it's uh, between villages, through villages, uh, speed limits between 30 and 100 kilometers per hour, 20 and 60 miles per hour. And here it's also important to keep the vehicle in motion, uh, keep the vehicle rolling, uh, read the road ahead of you, maybe keep some distance to smooth out uh, the, the driving style of the driver in front of you if it doesn't drive uh, efficiently and so you can reduce the amount of energy.
Yeah, that was a bit annoying today with all those uh, roadworks and uh, sleeping poles on the road. So we are at the end of the open road section and here we see 11.9 kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers. We're now hitting the motorway and there's a general speed limit of 100 kilometers an hour on this section. We're now coming to the end of the motorway and going around the corner here you see 13.0 kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers. In the city section it's important to keep the vehicle in motion, read the road, try to anticipate what other road users are doing and uh, try to avoid braking, avoid acceleration, a re-acceleration. Um, and yes, even if this is an EV which recuperates when braking, uh, it's still better not to do so, as you never get back what you have invested beforehand or have to invest afterwards in order to re-accelerate. So, read the road, look ahead and try to keep the vehicle at steady speed. It's not always possible, of course, but at least try. Wow, yeah, that was uh, quite annoying today. Uh, you see the the time, it's 1.52. It's the longest time I've ever used for this trip. Um, a lot of traffic and roadworks that uh, rented us from going a bit quicker. So anyway, 12.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. Yeah, that's roughly what I expected. And now let's have a look at the details. 
Well, let's have a quick look at the details. Uh, you see here the, the weather was nice. We had 17 inch Michelin tires. The weight's pretty good of this car uh, in the sense of that it's not too high. One and a half tons. That's, that's really good. Uh, time today was rather slow. Or the average speed today was rather low because um, we had a lot of road works and you saw it on the video. And uh, at one point we stood almost five minutes just uh, at a temporary uh road closure um yeah that was not representative but didn't have much of an effect or a big effect wltb 17.9 including charging losses and uh, we had 12.7 which is pretty much in line with uh that i normally stay or they can stay around 15 20 percent below wltb and the if you look at the um consumption at the sectoral and overall consumption here um, in your money the 30 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers on the ascent and the 16.5 on the hills cannot be taken really seriously as uh, it was only 30 max that was shown on the board computer i assume it was probably around 32 33 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers uh, so um, yeah but it doesn't matter overall 12.7 uh, the board computer seemed to have calculated it properly in the background, but it just didn't show more than 30. Well, 15.6 on the motorway, that's rather good. And uh, compared with all the other cars, those SUV type like cars. So, uh, yeah, and the weight specific consumption, the column on the far right, 0 0.813 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. It's just below average, but um, this isn't a luxury car. It's it surely isn't as refined as a Volvo or BMW or whatever, but uh, this car doesn't want to want to be like that. It's a it's a cheap car, and not cheap in the sense of that it's that it's cheaply made. It's just you get value for money. Uh, it's around thirty seven thousand euros around here uh, in the better version that I had today. But if, if you compare it with this ZS, the MG ZS, uh, it's much more refined. It's uh, it's a good car for the money you pay for it and therefore I only can recommend this car if you if you uh, want a station wagon if you don't like SUVs and if you still need some space so it's a good car full stop eco driving wise uh, yes how do how do you get to 12.7 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers as I said in the video Try to read the road, try to anticipate what other road users are doing, try to keep the vehicle in motion, try to avoid braking, try to avoid stopping. And yeah, it's basically all those basic tips that I have already shown in uh, this video. These are my five tips of how to drive EVs more efficiently. And down here you'll find the playlist with all the EVs I've tested so far. That's it for the MG5. Thanks for watching. Take care. See you next time.